All right, so talk a bit about our crate and uh, how we go ahead of moving these things out of the PID record and into a separate object to keep the collection. So we, our motivation is for gathering all kinds of research outputs and not the collection of just one thing, but having collection of different types of things. Mainly if you have research output, you have often many different types of objects coming out that may be published in all kinds of repositories like Figshare or very domain specific uh, repositories for protein sequences and so on. And the idea of the research object is to gather these in a kind of virtual package. They may include some actual files, but it might include some references out there. And then these are related together, giving brief description so we know what they are and why they are in this collection. So this is our main aim. So we're trying to be fairly platform independent and we're not too tied into a particular way of storing or identifying uh, these components. Uh, we do, do want to have enough information for reproducibility and to support data that are uh, coming in from different sources and may not even be accessible directly because they require uh, authorization and so on. And so our approach is called our crate. It's a, a, a way to re reuse existing standards and uh, that is fairly web-based. But when I say web-based, we, as I said, we're platform independence. We're not requiring our crates to be stored on the web, but we're using those technologies to our advantage because we think that's fairly well known by many developers. They can deal with JSON objects. As we saw before, uh, it's become quite uh, lingua franca right? in describing objects now. But we know there are a diverse set of objects people want to describe. So we want us to have some extension sensibility. We don't want to mandate only certain properties people can use. So here's schematically what I mean when I say an R create. So R create is a collection. It has its own metadata. Uh, most of it fairly straightforward, like the author, uh, license state and so on. But then you have a set of content and the content could be traditional files, as I said, it could be references to a uh, more complex object using handles or DOIs. It could be something on the web, but it could be software, act more active things like I'll come back into. And then each of those can be described. So I'm going to have to jump straight into JSON land to show you this. So that's why I have a little warning triangle, but I think this is a safe space so we can uh, all uh, have a, a quick look. So we're using JSON link data, which is a, uh, a way of using JSON where the keys have meaning. So they are defined already what the keys mean based on the mapping of the context. And that is basically the magic bit we insert in the top there. And the way we have documented this is that you shouldn't normally care too much about the link data aspect except that provide the links if you have them. Uh, but it does mean we can process this and make knowledge graphs and so on if we want to. So our request are always self-declared because we want to, if you just find one in the wild, you can know that it is an RQuest and in fact it's this particular version so you know which conventions we are following. Uh, and then you have this uh, metadata about the, ob the crate itself. So that's the outer box you saw before. So it maybe has some identifier, author, and so on. You see these are all mostly full uh, identifiers, could be your wires. We, we use existing registries for people and organizations. And then the content is listed as parts. So there you go. It's the same as part as we saw before. Uh, but they can be mixed. So here you see there could be local files as well as handles and so on in here. So because, uh, as I said, we are flexible in how you store the R-Create. So the base assumption is you have a folder and you put an R-Create metadata file into it. Now you can describe those files. And then you can deposit this wherever you want. And it could be that all of these are uh, persistent identifiers and there are no such files. And then the thing is that we have additional entities to describe each of these. So each of these can kind of get unrolled below. So we include some core metadata for each of the items. You don't have to follow the links to see what that 
uh, individual item is described as. And that is important because many of them don't have any fair digital objects. Like I said, people, they could be in all kinds of repositories. They maybe just have a web page or there could be files that are, are fresh and don't have anywhere to go. So each of those can be described in the same way. And then you keep adding uh, nested links. So in this case, it's what we call a contextual entity. So it's an entity that you basically can't download, like a person, you can't download a person. So uh, it could be digital twins like that. And of course, these are linked onwards. So this is fairly basic for anyone who knows linked data, but the thing is, you shouldn't need to know linked data to do that because we only have this very flat list of approaching. So we have a kind of profile of JSON lead that is more guided than having all kind of possibilities. The first one is a good example because it's a file that has been localized based on a <coughs> had a persistent identifier. But if you go to that Synode page, you just get the landing page. You don't get the actual image. So we have to kind of unroll it in this way. So in a collection, you can have different kinds of focus. And typically there's some objects in there that are more important. So the most basic thing is that just using has part like that, and there's just a flat collections of things. Uh, although it could be nested, you could have a hierarchy as well. And that could be even through other crates. So you have, then you follow the links to see the content of that crate. You, uh, you can indicate a particular subject, a context, context of a crate. So that would be the about, so it would be a topic. It could be a species or it could be whatever is the identifier for the thing that this our crate is about. This is typically a real world object, right? So it's not something you can download. In fact, this our crate represented somehow. If it is a digital twin, you promote that up the main entity because then it is the main thing that this is about. And that could also be one of your data. So if this is a crate that describes the output of analysis, that output is the main entity, but there could be additional things to describe how it came to be. You can also mention things that kind of are just added in on the side. I kind of see also a thing I mentioned. So, so that these could be a way to bring in things to the collections that are not strictly member because they're not uh, something you consider part of the collection, but they're still important to understand it. And it could even be that your crate is only those, that is like a metadata aggregator, in which case there is no downloadable parts to the R crate, except for the metadata. So we use the common vocabularies, uh, but only extend when we need to. So the most common vocabulary we use is schema.org because we say we use web technology. So the core entry is the data set, which is based on DCAT and it has of those useful properties we talked about like water and so on but there's lots of types in schema or for real world objects and that's also it's quite important for connecting that context so as you can describe organizations or places uh different instruments and so on we also have rendering to html because we know the json not everyone speaks json so we have a way to show each of these entries and this goes back to what i said that not everything is already a digital object. Because if I made here now uh, an entry for a person, you can click this in the preview and you can see uh, a rendering just like this, even if it doesn't already exist with an identifier. You have made a local identifier for that digital object that only exists within that crate. And the kind of there's no dif differentiation between those that are cited like this one and those that are <coughs> embedded. The thing when you cite, we only have the minimal information that is relevant for this collection. Okay, so I'll have a bit of taste of different ways people are using our crate and thinking about it from a collection point of view. So most of this collection is people doing language data. So this is the, my Australian uh, co-chair, Peter Sefton, who's working with uh, Language Data Commons, so the collection large copy of uh, corpora. I'm not sure how you pluralize corpus. And of language records, right? So you have a collection of collections in this case, right? Because you have lots of interviews with people speaking uh, lots of different native languages and so on. And you have video recording, transcriptions and so on. So there's a collection of collection of compound objects. 
and the using our crate to fit this particular profile for navigating this. And here's kind of GUI used for filling in that kind of information. And the same GUI is used by this uh, CS3 mesh project for connecting many different repositories. So kind of doing that gathering I mentioned before, when you have resources from many different places and maybe deposited in one of the more traditional uh, repositories, but then added in the metadata and the identifiers. So you don't lose that on the way. This is uh, one from plant sciences where you do lots of studies like growing things with certain uh, preparations and fertilizers and so on. And then you do maybe some sequencing. And so there's, there's a mix of many different sciences coming together and they organize the data uh, quite simply as they still use good old files and they manage them in GitLab repositories in a fixed folder structure with data filled in along the way. Then they run a tool that kind of combine all of this to make the R crate for you. So you can kind of gather the metadata bit by bit and then publish it in one single fair object. So here you have this mixture of a live object that keeps changing and then the published artifact, which have kind of uh, frozen things and maybe added additional formats. Uh, this one that's more close to my heart is the virtual hub that we run from Manchester and many of these projects. We're running computational workflows. So here the main entity is a workflow, it's a program you can execute. And of course you need a certain engine to run it and so on. So there's lots of context around the workflow as well. And that's what we capture in the workflow crate. So there's a type of our crate that is mainly focused on workflows. And that fits into an ecosystem. So here the, the crate is a unit of exchange. It's for publishing in the hub, but it's also for things happening during execution time. And during execution time, we try to track the provenance, but as you see, fairly lightweight. So if you follow the red arrow, you can see the, uh, the provenance chain be emerging from the final results and going back to the individual steps of the workflow. And it might be there is no actual workflow. It's just someone running it manually and you can describe it in exactly the same way. So we have this uh, kind of gradual approach to describing how something came to be. So this is some optional thing that you can add for when you have done computation analysis, and particularly when you have reused data from other digital objects to connect up those identifiers, it may be through some indirection like in this case. And uh, one new project we have now, 3FX is doing uh, secure our crate. So here is running in trusted research environments. So this, there's our data access agreement to get access to health data and but only approved workflows can run. So here our crate is more like a access token. So because it includes the, uh, all the metadata about who you are and what you have access to, and it gets checked if you are allowed to run certain workflows and so on. So here again, it was important to bring along that context along the journey so we don't lose it. And we can also, when we we finish, we can keep track of all the things that are attributed to a particular research project. Uh, we've also been doing some biodiversity thing. This is one from the Synthesis Plus project, which was doing a kind of combination of the two. So it's doing a workflow execution in a digital specimen refinery to build fair digital objects. And in this case, it's a digital train. So it's describing species in the wild, in this case, discovered in 1952. And so you have all these lovely text mining of handwritten labels to happening. So in this case, we have, you can read on these papers about how we did incremental uh, digital objects to develop this. But here, our crate is capturing that whole execution. And we're moving on in new deep biodiversity projects. Here, we should also hear about that are more on the both on the workflow side and also fair digital object side. But all these things to describe are like different ways of using our crate, and they're all kind of slightly different. So they're all special, except there's one person in the back who's not special. And so what we use to describe these are called profiles. So they're kind of a typing system, but it's more lightweight because it could be uh, textual guidance for humans, or it could be more structured. So we have some structure that we added now for computation and validation and so on. And it's called the profile crate. So you can add in additional terms, things that are not in schema.org that you can define in your 
uh, profile, and then maybe also things for validation. So you can check that certain properties exist. So it could be things like JSON schema and so on. And so in this case, we're eating our own dog food. So the profile itself is also a collection because it's not just one thing. There could be human guidance. It could be, uh, as I said, this vocabularies and so on. And to, to, to do that, we need this in-between thing because just the green bit doesn't tell you which is which. So we have the concept of roles being added in here. So here you see different roles for things in this collection. So the one on the left is a vocabulary, the one on the right is a constraint or a mapping. And so the, the kind of break apart that has part into also deciding the role it has in the collection was quite important to do that. And this is my quick argument about uh, pet digital objects. This, you probably have already seen something like this about what is the conceptual idea of fed digital object. But in case you were new to fed digital object, this is a quick intro. So we know we have a position identifier to some PID record, some record of what is inside, and then you can get to the data and the metadata. And a collection is just a type of these objects. And with our crate, we kind of realized it in very much the same way, where we use fair signposting and URLs as the entry point. So it doesn't have to be in the handle system, even though the DOIs are technically in the handle system, but you can be more flexible and using this uh, signposting over here to follow that same navigation. So here you see how you can find it. It is an R crate, and it's not just any R crate, it's a workflow R crate, and you can also find the direct downloads. So if you take away nothing else from this, I hope that you just add these headers to your uh, web server because then you can programmatically follow the digital object. I did, wouldn't need to do that in direction I did with the Sonoda image because if Sonoda did include that kind of download link like this, I could already follow it programmatically. And it's more about the signposting which I won't go into now. I have some discussion points, but I can lift them later. So I just want to remind about some shameless plug uh, that we have because so many of you are in Germany. So there's in July uh, a nice open science workshop that could be interesting. And also we have for impact, we have some calls for open calls. If you want to have a go, we're trying either signposting and our crate, you can get a tiny bit of support and uh, financial help with that. 